Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about writing what you want. And so this month in September of 2022, we've been focused on financial stewardship, and we've been talking about managing and multiplying everything that God's entrusted to us. And a concept I was just, just praying about, what are we talking about today? And just over the last probably 48 hours, God's reminded me of this concept of right what you want. There's been several times where things were tight financially, or maybe I was believing God for something that we needed or wanted. And I would write out a prayer specifically asking for exactly what we wanted. And it's amazing to watch how those prayers come true. I was in a tight spot several years ago in my gym business. Needed to move my business and uh, have it all work out in a perfect way, really. I got very tight on time. I had two days left. I just began to write out what I wanted. God began to open the doors to make things happen. So I was just reminded of this. I've got a, a guy that I know that's in a very similar situation. He's got to move his business quickly. And this concept kept coming to mind. Write what you want. And so we're talking about managing and multiplying all that God's entrusted to us. And I want to apply this into our finances today. And a principle I've learned is... At the beginning of every month, it's a great exercise for you to start implementing. For all of us, I need to get more consistent. And I've done it before and I've seen good results from it and I've gotten away from it. Is write out what you want the month to look like financially. Write it out. How much income are you believing God to bring in this month? What kind of expense levels are we looking for? What kind of profit are we left looking at left over? What do you want? And then specifically this week, we're talking about multiplying, talking about investing, multiplying money and investing. And I think it's important you get very clear as an investor on what you want. I always think of the story of Warren Buffett. He says that when investment come, when investment opportunities come at him, he has all these investment co opportunities coming at him all the time. He can filter them very, very quickly because he knows exactly what he's looking for. And he knows whether they fit the criteria or not right away. And so let's get into this practice. When it comes to investments, of writing out what you want, what are you looking for when it comes to investing? And then once we have your criteria, we're believing that God's going to send you those opportunities your way, and you're going to use that list as a way to filter out the opportunities that are not the right fit. So not every investment is the right fit for everybody. So let's talk about our filters for today. So these filters are short things that I write every night at the top of my journal as a way to stay in rhythm with God, to keep things top of mind, a way to filter my decision-making, kind of like we're talking about. I like to start with the big picture vision. In our program, the Abundant Life, Tra or Abundant Life Blueprint, our goal is to have Abundant Life Training Centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. Our program started about 10 years ago for me with Proverbs 13.22. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. But when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. I began to totally immerse myself in the things of God. He began to show up, began to teach me and train me. My relationship with him began to grow. He taught me this whole new way to live. Where we make him the source. We make him the center of everything. We learn how to rest. We learn how to trust in him, to walk in his ways of doing things. It wasn't always easy all the time. I mean, I had to put off my old ways and to learn how to walk out this new way of living. And I began to document what he was taking me through and the things that he was teaching me. And it turned into a series of books and courses, partners and blueprints that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And our goal is to build these abundant life training centers all over the world. Communities of people thriving working together in unity, walking out God's ways. And then this year, we're focused on 2022, the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he was going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the whole world. And that's symbolic of this rich inheritance that we have in Christ. It's got everything we need. This kingdom of heaven that God has prepared for us. And God's been teaching us this year how to possess it, how to hold fast to it. And then this month, like I said, we've been focused on financial stewardship, managing and multiplying everything God's entrusted to us. 
And this week, as we go around the, the cycle of a year, the yearly cycle, think of it like a circle of a year, a 360 degree view of who God is and all that he's done for us in Christ. Different seasons of the year, just give us, give us different, different glimpses of who he is. And this time of year right now, we're in what's called the 40 days of Teshuva. And we're getting very close to the last 10 days of Teshuva, which are a very special period called the 10 days of awe, a time to increase our reverence and awe and honor for God. And those 10 days, they start on September 25th this year of 2022 on the Feast of Trumpets, also called Rosh Hashanah. And they go to the Day of Atonement, also called Yom Kippur. And those 10 days are the lead up to the Day of Atonement, which is considered the most holy day of the year in the Jewish culture. Because it was the one day of the year when the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies and make atonement for the sins of the people for the year. And it's a reminder for us. Jesus is our high priest. His blood has washed us and cleansed us, made us new, made us clean. And this word teshuva, teshuva means to turn or repent. And in Acts chapter 3, it says that if we would turn or repent, God would wipe away our sins and times of refreshing would come from his presence. But to turn or repent, that takes a new decision. It's going to require some boldness, some courage, some decisiveness to do things in a different way. So we have that reminder for us right now. And this is it. today we're talking about writing what you want. So here's an exercise for us to do. At the beginning of every month, write out, how much income are we believing God for this month? Look at the budget together with your spouse, like we talked about, with God, your spouse, your business partners, whoever, whatever partners you have. Look at your cash flow projected coming in, coming out. Look at your budget. Let's start to believe God for increased income and cash flow on that. And I like to pray over it. I like to take communion over it. I like to write it out. Here's what we're believing for. And every time I've done this, it's worked. I've just gotten away from it a little bit. I need a reminder myself. And then when it comes to investments, we're going to start multiplying that money. We're going to start taking that money that we're setting aside. And we're going to start to multiply that money by investing. And we're going to get some very clear criteria in place. Let's begin to write out what you want. What are you looking for in your investments? I want this type of return. I want appreciation. I want cash flow. I want tax advantage ways of doing things. I want access to my money. It's not all tied up. What are the criteria you're looking for in your investments? It's a blessing to other people. We talked about investing in people. It's a blessing to other people. Does good in the world. What are the criteria we're looking for in our investments? Let's begin to write that out. And so Heavenly Father, we're asking for your help today. I believe this is the direction you're prompting us. But there's something else you want to show us about writing out what we want. And it's such a biblical principle in the book of Esther. The king told Esther, write what you want. Write whatever law you want. Jesus tells us, if you abide in me, you can ask for anything in my, in my name. So Father, as we abide in you, help us to understand this principle. Help us to walk in this consistently of writing what we want. And we're asking for your help to, to walk this out consistently in the area of our finances. And we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take a moment to remember God sent us Jesus. He didn't have to. He could have left us on our own, separated from him forever. But he chose the way of love. He chose to send us his son. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray. And he laid upon him the sins and the iniquities of us all. By his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. We could approach him with freedom and confidence. And God raised up Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him. He made us one with him. And it's that oneness, it's that unity with him, this common union, communion, that I think we're all looking for. We have peace with him. So Father, I thank you for this bread. 
and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. That after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. He's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us. Gives us this new covenant, this blood sworn oath that God is with us and for us. He's working for our good. We get to walk out this day to get today in partnership with God. Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right, so as a quick reminder. September 25th, coming up here. We usually start a Daniel fast in our program, The Abundant Life Blueprint. 10-day Daniel fast from Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, to the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur. 10-day Daniel fast, eating only things that can be grown from a seed. Fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, beans, whole grains, those types of things. And drinking only water. Now, sometimes people ask, well, what do you do for workouts during this time? And sometimes you might have a little lower energy. But if you do what we talked about a couple of days ago, you learn to roll the pressure of, of this over onto God. You learn to rely on his grace to do the work through you. Previous years when I've done it out of my own strength and willpower, I struggle with my workouts. But the last couple of years when I've done it, relying on God's grace, I've been able to do almost my whole workouts. But I would say you just do what you can do. Do what we, we talk about often. Do what you know to do. What can you do today? What can you do safely and beautifully? And you just begin to execute that every day. I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you go to the Abundant Life Training Center dot com.